Hi, this is Gary with MacMost.com. Here are some tips for being more productive when using Safari on your Mac. MacMost is brought to you thanks to a great group of more than 2,000 supporters. Go to MacMost.com slash Patreon. There, you could read more about it. Join us and get exclusive content and course discounts. Using Safari is pretty straightforward, just like using any other web browser. But there are some useful tips that will help you browse the web more efficiently. First of all, really embrace using tabs instead of multiple windows to go to different web pages. When you want to create a new tab, just use the keyboard shortcut Command T. Now you can close them just as easily. You can use Command W, which is usually Close Window. But if you go to File and then look at Close Window, you'll see when you have multiple tabs open, that's Shift Command W. And then Command W is just Close Tab. When you only have one tab open, then that will close the window. In addition, whenever you click a link, you can choose to open it up in a new tab. If you hold the Command key down, then typically this will open up a new tab that you can then go to. You've got settings for this in Safari, Settings, and then go to Tabs. If you check Command Click opens a link in a new tab, then you can hold the Command key down, click on any link, and you get that in a new tab. Furthermore, if you check the second box here, that it opens up the new tab and jumps to it, these two settings interact with each other in various different ways. So be sure to read this list down here to see exactly how your choices will affect how you use the different modifier keys with a click. And note when you have multiple tabs open, you can move between them using Control. That's Control, not Command, and Tab. So you use Command Tab to go between apps, but then Control Tab to go between tabs within Safari. Add the Shift key to this and you can go backwards through the tabs. You can also use the Command key, not the Control key, and one of the numbers to jump to a tab. So Command 3 jumps to the third tab, Command 2 to the second tab, and so on. With Command 9, always going to the last tab to the right. Now conversely, try not to use tabs too much. Some people really slow down their productivity by having 20, 30, 40, 50 different tabs open at a time. Tabs for pages they haven't looked at in quite a while. You want to kind of limit your use of tabs to make it the most efficient. It's usually pretty easy to trust that you could find a web page again. For instance, here I'm looking at a specific article on Wikipedia. I can easily go to Wikipedia and search for this and find it again. It's not like if I close the tab I'll never get back to this page. You can of course bookmark a page as an alternative to adding a tab and then just use the bookmark if you really feel you have trouble getting back here. Or you can use History to go back. Matter of fact, if you show all history or command Y, you can easily search your history and then find a page you were looking at earlier today, yesterday, last week, whenever. Even just using a regular search will show you different results including bookmarks and history. So you don't even have to go to the history page to actually search your history. Also limit how you use bookmarks. Having a few bookmarks can be very handy. Having hundreds or thousands of bookmarks basically defeats the purpose. In most cases, you can trust that you can easily find the web page with a web search next time. Or you can use your history, like I showed, to search for that page and go back to it. You don't have to save every page you find remotely useful as a bookmark. Another alternative to bookmarks is the reading list. If you go to bookmarks here and you look for add to reading list, shift command D, you could add a page like this to the reading list instead of your bookmarks. Then go to the sidebar here and then go to Reading List. The idea is Reading List is for something you want to go back to and read it later but not necessarily save permanently. Whereas a bookmark is something you want to save permanently because you need to keep going back to referring to it or it's a page that's updating with new information all the time. And speaking of using history, you don't always have to go to History here and then look through your history there or go to Show All History. You can also use the Back button for this. If you click the Back button once it goes to the previous page. But if you click and hold it, it will actually show you a history. And the interesting thing is this is a history of just this tab. So not of all the different windows and tabs that you're using in Safari. Just this one. Another tip having to do with tabs is that you can actually sort them. So if you have a ton of different tabs, you can go to Window and then Arrange Tabs By and you can pick Title or Website and it will sort them by Title or the Website Name. You can also Control click on any tab here and get that as one of the options. If you really have a lot of trouble closing tabs and you always end up with a ton of them no matter how hard you try to limit them, there's a setting for you in Safari Settings Tabs. 
you could set automatically close tabs to something besides manually. For instance, you could have tabs automatically close after one day. So if you haven't looked at a tab in one day, it goes away. One day is too short for you. Maybe try one week. In addition to using File and Close a Tab or Command W to close the current tab, you can control click, right click, or two finger click on any tab and just close that one tab that way. Or you can close all other tabs. So if you're doing research and you have a bunch of tabs open and you want to get rid of all of them except for the one you're on, you can use this. There's also the handy Close Tabs to the right. So you can arrange your tabs, move things around, drag them left and right, and keep the tabs on the left and just close the ones to the right to close a whole bunch of them. So for instance, if you have three tabs you want to keep, just move those to the left and then use this to close all the rest. And by the way, when you close a tab, undo works. So you can undo that close all tabs to the right or just closing the last tab. Another thing you can do is pin a tab. So you can control click, right click, or two finger click here and pin tab. And this does a few things. First, it moves it all the way to the left and takes up less space. In taking up less space, notice there's no close button for this. You can still control click it and then use close tab, but Command W won't work to close that tab. And if you close this window, all of these tabs will go away, but the pin tabs will stick around. So it's basically a way to work with tabs and show that some tabs are more important than others. Plus, if you ever click on a link in a pinned tab and it goes to a different site, notice that it will open up in a new tab, not change the page on the pinned tab. While keeping the number of bookmarks under control is important, there's one particular folder in bookmarks that has an interesting feature. If we go here to Edit Bookmarks and look at all the bookmarks here, you can see there's a Favorites folder. It works just like a regular folder when you're looking at your bookmarks. But if you go to View and turn on Show Favorites bar, these bookmarks, the ones in the Favorites folder, will appear here underneath the address bar. Matter of fact, a folder inside of this will appear as a little drop down menu. So you can put the sites that you go to all the time every day here in your Favorites folder and then use fewer tabs. So there's no need to keep this tab open, for instance, that shows Apple's page because I've got a Favorites bookmark that I could easily access at any time just by clicking right here. Now if you are using a lot of tabs, one thing you can do is separate them into different windows. So I've got this one window here with these three tabs. I can create a new window here and now I've got a bunch of different tabs here. But a way to do that in one window is to use tab groups instead. So I'm going to go to File and then New Empty Tab Group. Then I could go here and have some new tab groups and this is in a separate tab group. I can easily switch to this tab group and I'm back where I was before and then go to this one. It's like having two separate windows open except I'm only using one Safari window, each with its own set of tabs. Now you're going to be doing a lot of searching if you're browsing the web. Here are three of the best search tips that work in just about any search engine. One thing is when you do a search with multiple terms in it like this, the search engine is going to interpret what you mean. Do you mean these two words together? Do you mean that each word is found somewhere on the page or maybe just one word is found on the page? But if you put quotes around it, it does two things. First, it's going to look for those words together. So if you look at the search results here, you'll see not only does it find pages with those two words together, but it actually shows you a segment of the page that contains those two words. So you can look at the context in which they're used. The other thing it does is say that you only want to see pages with these exact words in them. So it's not going to look for similar words. The next thing is to use minus to subtract terms. So if you're looking for something like this, but you know you're not interested in a specific brand, you can put a minus without a space and then the word after it like that. And then your search results won't include that term. The ads might though, but the actual search results will be without that. And you could do multiple ones as well like that. And the third tip here is to use site colon and then no space and then type a domain like apple.com and then type what you want to search for. The results you get are only going to be from that site. And it could be a subsite as well. So you could type discussions.apple.com space and then a regular search term and you'll only get results that are there. But you don't actually need to do that in a lot of cases. For instance, if I were to type MacMost and then space and then a search term like iMovie, notice 
there's searchmacmost.com here. You have to go down here and click on it and you'll get not a search engine search result but a search result using the native search function of that site. So you go right to the site and you can see by the URL it's just doing a search with that site. The controls for this are in Safari settings under search and look for enable quick website search. Click Manage Websites and it will show you which websites you can do this with. Note you have to have gone to the website at least once for this to work. However, if I go to that website once and the developer has coded it correctly, it will then be added to this list because Safari will learn how to search that site. It's also common when you search to do a search like this. Go to the search results and then click on a result there and then maybe continue to go and click on other links and then you get to a dead end and you decide you want to go back to the search. You could go in your history back up to where you see the search there. But there's also a way to do it if you go to history. Look for return to search results and go to option command S. Then that takes you right back to the search page where you started your journey. Now even when you search the web and you find the page you want, sometimes the information you want isn't right there at the top. You can search on a web page itself using edit and then find and you can see the keyboard shortcut here for find is command F. This is search on the page. So command F brings up this little search box here and you can start searching for something and it will jump to the results. Also an easier way to read a page without having all of maybe the ads, the sidebar items, navigation items and all of that is to use reader view. If you go to view and then show reader or shift command R you can get this. There's a button up here for it too but the button doesn't always appear. Shift Command R will work even in cases where the button may not be there. And then it could be easier to read and even search with Command F for contents on this page. Now tabs are great for having multiple pages you can access very easily. But what if you want to see more than one page at a time? Well of course you can click the green button or hover over it and then go to enter full screen and it takes you to a full screen version of this window which can be handy to focus on what you're doing. But you can also do split view. Let's go here to the menu and create a new Safari window. And since I wasn't full screen already it creates a new window also full screen. So let's go to another page here. I'm going to enter Mission Control. So Control and Up Arrow. And now you can see my two full screen Safari windows. I can drag one to the other and they will go into split view mode. And now I'm looking at both at the same time. I can drag the middle bar a little bit to give one a little more space if I want. But this could be really handy. Like say you could have Google Docs open in one and you're taking notes and then your research here in multiple tabs in the other. Another way to get to this is if you've got two Safari windows open like this. Go to either one of them and hover over the green button and say you want to tile that to the left or right side of the screen and then it will ask you to choose a window for the other side with the windows that were available on that desktop and now you're in split view again. Back to this you can use these green buttons again or you can go back into Mission Control here and then just simply close that space and now everything goes back to regular windows. A productivity tool that's in Safari is the Start page. This is what you get when you create a new tab like this or you go to Bookmarks and show Start page there. You've got control over whether or not that shows up under Tabs. You've got New Tabs Open With and you can choose Start Page and Windows Open With and you could choose Start Page. The Start Page could be very useful. It's another place where you could show the Favorites folder and Bookmarks. But also show frequently visited pages, reading list, your recently closed tabs. So another way to get back tabs that you just closed. You've got your settings for the Start Page at the bottom right here and you could add or remove the things you like from it. A problem I often hear people have is they go to a web page and they're asked for the millionth time today to enter in a name or email address. But you shouldn't have to actually type anything in Safari. As long as Safari can recognize that this is an email address, in other words the website developers coded it correctly, you should be able to click in here and it should either give you a list automatically or you can click here to autofill from your email addresses. It's taking this from your contact card in the Contacts app. So make sure that's up to date and has the email addresses you want. But even for non-email fields like this name field here, I can click here and I can have it fill in information from my contact. And it will not just fill in that one field but as many fields as it could figure out. 
If you go to Safari settings and then look for autofill, so make sure you have all these checked. And these are shortcuts to the different parts of Mac OS that hold this information. Now let's say that you need to be logged into the same site with, with two different accounts. Like you have your personal Facebook account, but you also manage one for work. You can do that pretty easily just by being logged in in your main Safari window into one account and then creating a new private window which has its own cookies and website data and logging in here. And then you can be logged into two separate accounts. Problem is once you close the private window, it's gone. You have to create it again and log in again. But if you use Profiles, you can now be logged into multiple accounts. So you can open a new window of Safari that's using a different profile. That could be logged into a different Facebook account. And you can close that window, but then reopen a new window in the same profile when you're still logged in. It's like having two separate Safari apps. One where you're logged into a site under one account, and one when you're logged into that same site in a different account. And of course, no video on productivity and efficiency is complete without some keyboard shortcut tips. Some of my favorite keyboard shortcuts in Safari are Command L, which instantly takes you up to the address bar and you're ready to type. So you can start a new search or go to a web page right away without ever having to take your hands off the keyboard. Also, if you ever need to refresh a page, you don't need to go and find this tiny little button here in the address bar. Just use Command R and it will refresh the page. Also, the back button is something you might use a lot. You don't need to actually use the button. The keyboard shortcut as you can see here for back is Command and then the left square bracket. If you do close a tab and want to get back to it, a handy way like I showed is History and the keyboard shortcut for that is simply Command Y. But then you still don't have to go to the mouse or trackpad after that. You can just use the down arrow keys to go to the entry you want and then press Space Bar and it will jump to that page. So I hope you found some of these Safari tips useful. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, click the thumbs up button below to let me know. I publish new tutorials each weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.